In our final screencast for cost volume profit analysis, we'll look at target profit, income taxes, and a little bit of what if analysis. We'll do this by using our problem from the prior screencast, but we'll add a few additional bells and whistles. If you think you know how to solve these problems, you should give it a try before looking at the solutions. So the first three extensions we're going to look at are how many units do we need to sell in order to earn a profit of 3.5 million. Then we'll introduce a second product just to test our understanding of the prior screencast. And then on top of that, in the third part, we will ask how do we adjust these results if we want to do this on an after-tax basis. So the first problem we will try to solve is to determine how many units do we need to manufacture and sell in order to earn a profit of $3.5 million. Well, this is not too hard. Essentially, the idea here is that a profit of $3.5 million requires additional contribution margin above that of covering fixed costs. So in this case, the contribution margin required is a $6 million to cover fixed costs and an additional $3.5 million to cover the target profit. Therefore, what's required is $9.5 million of total contribution margin. Since the contribution margin per unit is $4, we end up requiring 2,375,000 units to be sold. If we wanted that in terms of revenues, we would take that number and multiply it by the sales price per unit of $12, and that would give us the total amount of revenues required to earn a target profit of $3.5 million. To address the second problem, we're going to need to calculate a weighted average contribution margin. We notice that Pogotech now has two products. The first product, which we saw had a contribution margin of $4 per unit, and a second deluxe product that has a contribution margin of $8 per unit. We're also told that Pogotech expects 60% of total units to be regulars, and therefore 40% will be deluxes. We use this information to calculate a weighted average contribution margin of $5.60. We also note that the problem says that there was an additional fixed cost of a million dollars in order to make the second product. So the total fixed costs now have gone from six million to seven million. And therefore, we can calculate the total break-even quantity as 1,250,000 units, 60% of which are regular, or 750,000 units, and 40% of which are deluxes, 500,000 units. In part three, we'll consider what will happen if Pogotech attempts to earn $2 million after tax when it faces a 35% tax rate. We will continue to use the scenario from the prior example. The first thing is to understand the difference between net income before tax and net income after tax. The difference, of course, is the amount of taxes paid, which in equation A is net income before tax times the tax rate. We can factor out net income before tax, which we do in equation B. And then finally, in equation C, we see the relationship between net income before tax and net income after tax. $2 million of after tax profits, we just take the 2 million and divide by one minus the tax rate. And if we do the calculation, we see that the net income before taxes required is $3,076,000 and some change. What's important, of course, is that net income before tax represents the amount of contribution margin that Pogotech has to earn. 
So now let's do the remainder of the calculation. So we have the net income before taxes, we have the fixed cost, and therefore we can calculate the total contribution margin requirement. Divide by the weighted average cost of capital, and we're able to determine the total number of units that have to be sold in order to hit the $2 million after-tax profit. Once again, it's important to remember to calculate the net income before tax, since that represents the amount of contribution margin that must be earned. Let's add an additional complication to our problem, and that is what happens if the sales mix were to change from 60% regular to 70% regular. Given what we've already done, this is not too hard. The first step is to recalculate the weighted average contribution margin using the new sales mix of 70% and 30%. The total contribution margin required stays the same, but of course now we have to use the new weighted average contribution margin. We're going to get a new total number of units required. An even more interesting complication would arise if there's uncertainty over what the sales mix would actually be. So I'm calling this a bonus round. And in this problem, there's an 80% chance the sales mix will be 6 out of 10 regulars, and a 20% chance the sales mix will be 7 out of 10 regulars. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we've already solved part of it because we know what the weighted average contribution margin is going to be under either case. So what remains is to figure out how to combine this information. Well, one way to do it is to take an expected value. And there's a little bit of additional uncertainty as to how to correctly take that expected value. So one way to do it is to calculate the total required units under either case and then weight those cases by the likelihood that each case will occur. So this calculation would look like the following. And what that says is there's an 80% chance that the sales mix will be 6 out of 10 regulars and if it is we know the total number of units required is going to be about 1,799,451. And there's a 20% chance the sales mix will be 7 out of 10 regulars, in which case the total units required will be 1,937,870 units. So we take the expected value over those two possibilities, and we see, therefore, that to incorporate uncertainty we would have an overall expected value of 1,827,135 units. But of course, there's another way of thinking about the problem, and that is this way. In both cases, the total contribution margin required stays the same. But what differs, of course, is the weighted average contribution margins. And one way of thinking about it is that there's an 80% chance that the weighted average contribution margin will be $5.60, and a 20% chance the weighted average contribution margin will be $5.20, in which case the expected weighted average contribution margin is $5.52. And so we could take required contribution margin, divide by this expected value, and get 1,825,530 units as the answer to the problem. Both solutions are probably okay, and it's really hard to say which is the ultimately correct solution here. Fortunately for us, they give approximately the same answer, so in practice it wouldn't matter which of the two methods you used.